This video was brought to you by Brilliant. Hi, welcome to another episode of Cold Fusion. Yes, we are emergency, we are depressurized, we do need to return back to, we have 177 passengers, zero is 18-8. That was an exchange between the pilot of Alaska Airlines Flight 1282 as the door of the Boeing 737 flew off the aircraft mid-flight an emergency landing was declared. Imagine being a passenger on that plane as it happened. For 117 passengers on board that flight, that was their reality. It was extremely fortunate that there were no injuries or casualties after such an event. For most travelers, boarding a plane is an inherent act of trust. Instinctively, we rely on the industry's expertise and competency. However, Boeing's most recent scandal with Alaska Airlines has shaken this very foundation of trust. But this incident is one of only many that has rocked Boeing in recent years. In this episode, we dive into Boeing's track record of failures and mismanagement and try to answer one critical question. Is there more to blame than Boeing? From the temptation of Wall Street profits to the pitfalls of American corporate governance, this case has consequences extending far beyond boardrooms and into the future of air travel. To give more insight into the situation, I interviewed Petter from the YouTube channel Mentor Pilot, who has been a commercial pilot for over 20 years. Without further ado, let's get into it. You are watching Cold Fusion TV. Boeing was founded by William E. Boeing in Seattle, Washington in 1916. It quickly became a trailblazer in innovation and engineering. They were at the forefront of designing, manufacturing, and selling airplanes, rockets, and satellites. In 1969, Boeing launched the iconic 747, which was hailed the Queen of the Skies, and the plane that shrunk the world. The Boeing 747 revolutionized air travel. Back then, the saying was, if it's not Boeing, I'm not going. So then, how did Boeing go from this? Phil, air travel has really made you a bon vivant. Our new 747. Somehow, you feel more important on TWA. To this. A new report calls for dozens of changes to improve the safety culture at Boeing. Many critics point to a misaligned merger in 1997 as the catalyst for Boeing's downward spiral. You see, towards the end of the Cold War, defense contractors, including Boeing, feared that there wouldn't be enough business amidst a decline in military-related orders. And so, in 1997, Boeing merged with its competitor, McDonnell Douglas, in one of the aerospace industry's largest mergers, worth over $13 billion. Boeing's engineering first ethos and culture quickly crumbled, overpowered by McDonnell Douglas's profit-first approach. The joke going around Seattle was, McDonnell Douglas bought Boeing with Boeing's money. Meanwhile, over on Wall Street, cash was king and greed was good. And Boeing president, Harry Stonecipher, was orchestrating an internal transformation that sent the world a clear message. Boeing was no longer an engineering powerhouse, but rather a business operating solely to satisfy shareholders. Quote, when people say, I changed the culture of Boeing, that was the intent so it's run like a business rather than a great engineering firm. Thousands of jobs were axed and Boeing relocated to Chicago so executives could make decisions without any input or pushback from the engineers actually making the planes. By 2003, Boeing's reign was under threat by a European airline manufacturer known as Airbus. Airbus had, for the first time, overtaken Boeing's market share in jet deliveries. Then, in December 2010, Airbus caught Boeing off guard by launching the A320neo. It was powered by a fuel-efficient engine and sold a record-breaking 667 planes in under a week. To put it into perspective, that was more orders than Boeing's 737 had received in an entire year. And Boeing? They didn't have a plan to compete, so they were left scrambling to catch up. And what happened next wasn't just a struggle for market dominance, but can be directly tied to the loss of 346 lives. It's considered to be one of the most tragic and costly disasters in corporate history. We'll recap the deadly events of 2019 as context for evaluating their recent scandals, such as the Alaska Airline incident. So back in 2011, Boeing, racing to keep up with Airbus, launched the 737 MAX. 
But instead of building a brand new plane, Boeing added new fuel-efficient engines to an aging 737 aircraft which was now 45 years old. These engines, though better for the environment and more efficient, were bigger and heavier and had to be placed further forward on the aircraft, and this altered the aerodynamics of the aircraft. The changes caused the plane's nose to pitch up in certain conditions. To counter this, Boeing hacked their way through the problem. They introduced the Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation System, or MCAS. It was meant to be a flight stabilizing software that adjusted the flight controls to prevent stalls automatically. But the thing is, Boeing barely told anyone, even the pilots. Instead of talking to pilots and how can we fix this, engineers thought, ah, we can sneak in a little system. Pilots don't need to know about it. It'll handle this little business where pilots are not going to be flying anyway. And here is where things started to go very, very wrong for Boeing. Firstly, the MCAS relied solely on data from a single sensor, the angle of attack sensor. If this sensor were faulty or fed the system wrong information, MCAS would send the whole plane into a dangerous and unrecoverable nosedive. The result was the Lion Air and Ethiopian Airlines crashes, which sadly claimed the lives of so many. So how exactly did the MCAS system lead to the tragic deaths of hundreds of people? I asked Peta to break it down for us. I don't think the events unfolded the way most people think it did. The 737 MAX, like it, it, it was always a good aircraft. It always flew well. It was never unstable. Because you see that in, in, in newspapers all around, like, yeah, we needed to put MCAS in this system to stabilize the aircraft because it was aerodynamically unstable. No, it was never aerodynamically unstable. It flew perfectly. What it didn't do though, was fly exactly like the previous model. And this is super important because if the same pilots are going to be flying the next generation model, the NG, and the MAX without providing any flight training, then they need to behave exactly the same in all different configurations and situations. And that was a problem because Boeing could have then certified it like that, but you would have then needed to train the pilots. And that would have mean all of these airlines that just wanted to buy the MAX and put it into operation next to their older jets and just let the pilots fly in between them would have now needed to take all of their pilots out, put it into a simulator, and that would have taken time and cost a lot of money. So instead, Boeing said, well, why don't we use this MCAS feature that we already have from the 767 tanker? And what this MCAS system was supposed to do was in very specific situations, so that high angle of attack situation, it would trim forward a couple of times move the vertical stabilizer in the back forward just a few turns so that you would get that same feeling. That's all that MCAS was supposed to do. But something crept into the system where the MCAS system would trim forward more than what was thought that it would do. And not only that, every time that the, the pilots would reset by trimming themselves, the, the uh, system would trim again. Right, it would reset itself and retrim, and reset itself and retrim. This was never in the real specifications. Okay, no one in the quality department noticed that this happened. It was just a feedback from the test pilots that the system was just supposed to be a tiny little subsystem on the far fringe of the the usable spectrum. It didn't need to have any redundancy. It wasn't supposed to be a dangerous system, so therefore it fell under a different category of rules when it came to certification. But then it became dangerous. And with the kind of features that it had when it actually hit the line, it should have needed three sensors, at least, in order to activate. So, to cut costs and avoid regulatory compliance, Boeing deceived airlines into believing that the pilots didn't need any additional training for the 737 MAX. And what's worse is that Boeing also purposely removed any mention of the MCAS from the operations manual relied on by pilots. A move that totally slipped under the radar of the Federal Aviation Administration, or FAA, a regulatory body agency whose whole point is to prevent companies from cutting corners. It was during this time that an under-resourced and underfunded FAA was relying heavily on Boeing to regulate itself. What could possibly go wrong? Boeing's MCAS system caused two catastrophic crashes, Lion Air Flight 610, and Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302. After this, Boeing faced a PR and financial storm. This included a $20 billion financial loss and a $2.5 billion settlement with the Department of Justice, and this was for deceiving the FAA. From 2019 to 2024, the spotlight has been on Boeing for all the wrong reasons. With every media report, 
every whistleblower account, a troubling picture became clearer. With its bottom line threatened, Boeing still clung to their corporate culture, one where, at times, speed was prioritised over thoroughness and safety was traded for share market gains. Boeing's own technicians refused to board their own planes. Debris was founded near electrical wiring. Loose and defective parts were discovered in hundreds of aircraft. A senior manager even reused a dented hydraulic tube in a scrap bin. Boeing was outsourcing engineering work to temporary $9 an hour contractors. Boeing was grappling with systematic quality issues across the entire fleet. In 2011, passengers in a Boeing 37 jet en route from Phoenix to Sacramento were rocked by a terrifying incident. The last thing you want to see when you are in a plane at 36,000 feet, the sky through the roof of the plane. A five-foot hole suddenly ripped open its roof mid-flight. The incident was blamed on, quote, extremely poor manufacturing technique. In 2015, an FAA auditor in Japan found a Boeing subcontractor had been falsely certifying cargo door certifications for hundreds of 777 aircraft for years. In 2021, a damaged fan broke off a Boeing 777 engine shortly after takeoff from Denver. As soon as I opened the door, I go, oh, that's the front engine of a plane. And then, of course, on January 5th, 2024, just 20 minutes into Alaska Airlines flight 1282, and at 16,000 feet above the ground, another disaster struck. A panel serving as a door plug to replace a removed emergency exit flew off its hinges, leaving a gaping hole in the plane. Here's what happened. This fuselage came in to Boeing from a facility in Wichita, Kansas on a train. There was a problem with rivets that were located near this door plug. In order to fix that problem, they had to take the door plug out. Well, once they fixed the problem, they put the door plug back in, but they forgot to put the bolts back in. Plugging emergency exits is a pretty common practice by airlines. Each emergency exit requires maintenance and inspection costs. So if airlines want to seat fewer people and offer more legroom, Federal laws green lights sealing off any additional emergency exits. In the case of Alaska Airlines Flight 1282, however, an investigation by the National Transportation Safety Board, or NTSB, revealed that four crucial bolts meant to secure the door plug to the Boeing 737 MAX 9 were missing. Had the plane been any higher, the pressure change could have sucked passengers out of the aircraft if they weren't strapped down. And this exact scenario has happened before. The airline now says that as many as 16 people are missing after disaster struck Flight 811 from Hawaii to Auckland. In 1989, United Airlines Flight 811 turned into a nightmare when at 22,000 feet, a door burst open. The explosive decompression sucked nine passengers out of the aircraft. Just one year earlier, Aloha Airlines Flight 243 suffered a similar fate when, at a normal altitude of 24,000 feet, part of the fuselage ripped open mid-air due to wear and tear. A flight attendant was ejected and 65 passengers were injured. Now back to 2024. The following week after the Alaska Airlines debacle, Boeing's stock plunged by nearly 10%. While Bank of America stood by its recommendation to buy Boeing shares, it issued the following statement. Quote, we do not expect this current issue to have a material impact to our 2024 financial forecast. We do see the latest incident as eroding the fragile confidence that has been built around the 737 MAX franchise. In our view, Boeing needs to tread carefully and cautiously through this potential reputation minefield. So what else can we learn from Boeing's story? Perhaps we should examine how Boeing became the spoilt child of United States manufacturing, cushioned by its close ties to regulators and politicians, and supported by tax breaks and tariffs. Boeing has a history of using their deep pockets to dial back safety standards, lobby decision makers, and corner the American market. Together with its part supplier, Spirit Aerosystems, Boeing has invested more than $65 million into lobbying and also campaign contributions over the last four years. The result, fast-tracked aircraft production and an impressive show for shareholders. Before the 2019 crashes, Boeing played a role in crafting a bill that weakened the government's ability to approve new aeroplane designs. And then, Senator Jerry Moran, as top recipient of Spirit Aerosystems lobbying dollars, pushed the FAA to do everything necessary to get the 737 MAX back in the skies. Senator Maria Cantwell, who received nearly $200,000 in Boeing donations, also helped Boeing bypass a critical deadline for their 737 MAX alerting systems. 
In 2022, Boeing moved its headquarters to Washington DC to ramp up its lobbying game. With Boeing under the microscope, there's a big question looming. Can they rise back to the top of excellence and regain trust, not just from the public and airlines, but also from themselves? After all, Boeing CEO Dave Calhoun has even urged 737 customers to conduct their own additional reviews. He's also expressed full support for the FAA's intensified investigation, audit, and oversight measures. Quote, this added scrutiny from ourselves, from our regulator, and from the customers will make us better. It's that simple. So what steps must Boeing take to regain trust and move forward? Is their incompetence and toxic corporate culture solely responsible? Or should we be examining systematic flaws within the entire aviation industry? Do passengers need to start questioning their trust in the planes, pilots, FAA, and government? I'll bring in Petter from Mentor Pilot with his thoughts on that. Could you briefly touch on a few checks and balances that are in place to ensure that air travel is, is safe? Yeah, so the, the, the absolutely most important system that is available to make um, air travel safety, it's the way that anyone can report a problem or a mistake that they've made without feeling that they're risking to lose their jobs. So if I make a mistake, and it's an honest mistake, and I report it, which I should do, then what's going to happen is that the airline is going to look into it, they're going to see why it happened, and they're going to potentially give me some extra training if, I, if it's needed. But if it's a systemic fault, they're going to try to fix that. So they're looking for the core root of the problem. They're not looking for someone to blame. This is super important because what happens then is that everyone knows about this. Everyone reports it. So we are constantly getting better and safer. That safety culture, that open and non-punitive culture is the most important thing that keeps aviation safe. On top of that, you have very stringent certification requirements for anything that has to do with aviation, aircraft, aircrew, down to the bolts and nuts that are being used inside of the aircraft. It has to be shown to be safe in every conceivable situation before anything new is being let out. Th those two things together create an extremely safe environment. Nothing new happens unless we know that it works, basically. I think Petter is right. Reducing the amount of fear in voicing concerns is such an important process for something as precision critical as the aviation industry. Unfortunately, recent reports from February 2024 have highlighted that Boeing's employees don't feel as safe as they should be while reporting incidents. A new report calls for dozens of changes to improve the safety culture at Boeing. It was ordered before the door plug blowout, but mentions the incident. Joyce, bottom line, it says Boeing must do more to make workers feel comfortable about speaking up on safety issues without fear of retaliation. The company says it's been working on ways to do that even before the release of this report. The report released Monday found a, quote, disconnect between senior management and some employees, a lack of clarity on safety procedures at different manufacturing plants, and concerns about whether speaking up could lead to retaliation, impacting workers' salaries or company standing. This really was not a surprise for me because I expected even before the latest incident that, uh, that there had been a substantial slippage in, in terms of the way Boeing used to be, which was an engineering company of great quality that made money to one that made money by engineering. But looking more holistically, we can't force all the blame onto Boeing. Let's take a look at Boeing's relationship with the Federal Aviation Administration and why they, together, face an uphill battle to regain public trust. Before we continue, let's hear a quick word from our sponsor. Every day in the aviation industry, there's uncertainty that has to be dealt with. Understanding how probability works is essential to keeping operations running smoothly. Brilliant has a course on predicting with probability using real-world aviation data. In their Dealing with Uncertainty lesson, they use real data from flight emergencies. You can learn about that and other STEM subjects with Brilliant. Brilliant has interactive STEM courses in anything from maths to computer science and general science. So whether you just want to brush up on your learning or just need that refresher for your career, Brilliant's got you covered. You can get started for free for 30 days and the first 200 people to sign up get 20% off an annual plan. Visit the URL brilliant.org slash coldfusion. Thank you. Now back to the video. Since the 1950s, the FAA has delegated oversight to manufacturers, and this made sense during the golden era when Boeing was led by engineers and not financial executives. Jump to 2006, and now Boeing has an unrecognizable new flight plan, profit over everything. 
However, the relationship with the FAA, where Boeing acted as both the athlete and referee, remained unchanged, much to the disapproval of the Government Accountability Office. Quote, Looking back at what happened in the aftermath of the MAX incidents, I can't help but think the FAA, candidly, had a lot of trouble walking and chewing gum. I think that they struggled with being able to carry out all of their duties and responsibilities. Compared to its European counterpart, the European Union Aviation Safety Agency, the FAA was increasingly criticised for its lax certification and delegating oversight to manufacturers like Boeing. Former Boeing employees reported that presentations to FAA regulators lacking technical knowledge were like, quote, dogs watching TV. Another former employee described Boeing's airplanes as, quote, designed by clowns, who in turn are supervised by monkeys. After the 2019 tragedies, it was determined that the crashes were partly blamed on the FAA by giving Boeing too much control over its safety checks. Congress passed bipartisan legislation and the FAA promised to clean up its act. And yet, here we are in 2024, with the FAA pledging to do the same once again. But this time, considerations are made to moving inspections to an independent third party, with the FAA blaming a lack of resources and funding for its hands-off approach. This is truly a case study in the failures and dangers of self-regulation. Given everything that we've explored in this video, what do you think is at the core of Boeing's failures? A regulatory environment that favours self-policing? Governmental protectionism? Or shareholder greed? The bottom line is, the queen of the skies has lost their way. As we navigate Boeing's complicated legacy, we should question whether the responsibility lies on a single corporation, or rather, a system that allows ambition to eclipse accountability. Are we willing to confront a reality where, in the pursuit of profits, lives are gambled away? A special thanks to Petter for giving us his insights. If you want to watch the full interview on the second channel, I'll leave a link for that below. Okay, so that's about it from me. I want to thank you all so much for watching till the end. If you did enjoy it, share this episode with someone who you think will be interested. My name is Dagogo, and you've been watching Cold Fusion, and I'll catch you again soon for the next episode. Cheers, guys. Have a good one.